After watching this video, you will never look at coins the same again. I'll guarantee you. Stay tuned to find out what I'm talking about. I attend the Green Hills Coin Show in the greater Cincinnati area of Ohio. It's the last Sunday of every month. If you want to know where it's located, directions, uh, you can go over to CoinZip and check that out or even look for local coin shows in your area. Now this is a lot of details about the minting process and coins and how they're made and where errors are made. I'm not going to be going all that slow because it will take too much time. I mean this can be, volumes can be written on this. So what I want you to do is, is come over here. It's coinauctionshelp.com, minting process history. And basically look at this slowly. Go through and read everything. Um, I'm going to try to cover it as best I can. But, you know, this is what you need to know about coins and how they're minted and how the dies are made and where they're made and where the errors occur. It's very important that you come over here, right here, and go to this website, which is my website, um, this is actually a PDF that was created that I converted to a web page. So, you know, come on in here and take a look and it'll give you a better idea and it'll kind of slow down because I'm not going to be going as slow as you probably should go trying to explain all of this. So let's get started. So here is the basic setup for minting coins. Okay. First off, you have the coil stock that is fed through the blanking press. Now, one of the things about it, there, when you're the coil stock, I'm, this is going, I'm jumping ahead a tad because this is in some of the slides, but that way it'll help you visualize. Whenever they create this coil stock, this metal coil, that's where you can get uh, basically metal inclusion, maybe a roam like extra metal, which would be rolled into it. It wouldn't be raised on the coin or anything. It'd just be part of the metal. Um, I've got a picture of that on my website as well. Also, improper alloy mixture, things like that can happen before they're ever punched out as a planchet. So once it goes through here, sometimes something goes wrong and you'll have an overlap that will cause a clip planchet. And also, webbing can be uh, an error. Some people like to buy the webbing for certain denominations. So once it comes out through here, it's a type 1 and it's called a blank. Okay. And then it goes through the annealing furnace. Now, in the annealing furnace, there can be other metal molecules that can adhere to the coin, and the annealing oven actually softens the planchet a little bit. Then it gets into the quench tank, um, basically cools it off. Now, one of the things about that is that whenever it goes through this process, and you've got the washer, and you've got the dryer, sometimes a detergent or something can still remain on that planchet if it's not properly washed off completely. Uh, sometimes that could be what causes milk spots, and sometimes that can cause other things on coins. That's real minor, but it's usually unsightly. Then you've got the upsetting mill. Now, on the upsetting mill, they receive the rim on the planchet as far as, you know, the edge that you see. And then it's called a type 2 planchet. Okay. Now, once it goes through that, it goes into the coining chamber. And in the coining chamber is where the dies are. One of the things before a blank planchet gets into the dot coining chamber, there is nothing on that planchet except maybe, like I said, something that didn't get washed off. Possibly it could be something that uh, a contact mark or something like that. It can be a clip planchet. It can be improper alloy mixture. It can, you know, different things like that, you know, or an improperly annealed planchet. But it won't have shapes on it. It won't have any kind of design on it. There's, it, it just won't have anything special. And all these errors are just, they're more, more minor errors than anything, unless it's a large denomination, you know, like a, a big dollar. A big dollar is one of those that's it's rare with a clip planchet or something like that. Now, once it does get into the coining chamber, you've got the dies. Now, we're going to go over how the dies are created, but one of the things that's very important here is that the dies have the design on them, and that's it. Okay, they don't put special Masonic symbols on them or Spaceman or people pictures or whatever. Yeah, there's been wrong dies installed or a coins went back through that was a dime and got struck with a, a Lincoln cent planchet or something. Little things like that can happen. Most of your dramatic errors are going to happen in this coining chamber. You know, when you've got cap dies, if they don't get caught in time, those are striking errors. If you've got multiple strike coins or bonded pairs, that all happens in the coining chamber when coins get jammed. That's when your major mint errors happen, is 
whenever something gets goes wrong inside the die chamber and actually coins get stuck and jammed up and things like that. But those are all meant errors. Okay, they're not varieties. You want die varieties if you're looking for double dies. And the die is already doubled before it strikes the coin. Before it's even installed in this chamber here, it's already doubled. Okay. Same thing with repunch mint marks. Repunch mint marks, the die had the mint mark hand punched on it up until 1990. 1989 and back. Okay. Now, in 2000, they no longer use the two squeeze method to create the dies. So now they use a single squeeze, but they're still double dies, but there's just not as many classes now as there used to be. So anyways, we're going to go through this process a little bit. I'm going to talk about creating the dies. Hopefully this kind of cleared the air for any maybe misconceptions you might have had on how the minting process is developed. This is from the Encyclopedia Britannica. It's 2006. You know, some things could have changed since then. Here's what you have is a, a Gavana. And this is basically the sculpture that they use to reduce to the actual die. And that would be the master hub. This is the minting process in a nutshell from 1792 to 1836, the hand engraved dies. I go through and I explain this a little bit. You can, you can kind of read it. Like I said, go to the website here because there's no way you're going to be able to read this. I'm not I'm going to stay on the page that long. But it kind of explains different things that happened uh, during different times in the minting process so that you can understand it a little bit more. I got a little uh, thing about proof dies here as well, but 1907 to present about what digits were hand punched at one time as well. So you have different errors over mint marks and things like that can happen. Then you have the hammer and the anvil. The hammer die strikes down towards the anvil die and supposedly it's supposed to have a coin in the middle there. If it don't, then you were going to have what they call a die clash and that can translate onto a coin as well. And it's typically a minor error, but you know it is a mint error. Then you come over here and basically you've got the hammer die and it shows that you have the master hub right here, and then it creates the master dies and they all the way down to the working dies. Okay, and you've got to start off with the master, and then it's got to create some master dies. Okay, then you go down to the, the working hubs, and then you've got the working dies that actually strike the coins. Okay, these will all strike the coins. If a double die happens with one of these, it's typically going to be more rare. If it's a master hub double and you have a lot of master hub double, 1972 is a perfect year for that. Then you're going to have a lot of uh, double dies for that. And it's not going to be worth as much. Typically, you want one single die that was doubled and not very many of them were struck, like the 1969S or the 1955 double die or something like that. But that's where, like I said, you know, it kind of explains the process. You start off with one master hub and then it creates all of these. And depending on what the vintage is going to be, is how many dies they actually create in the first place. And like I said, this is a very basic, I'm going through this really fast, it's really basic. But up here, I want to show you this, though. You can kind of see it kind of hidden. But I've got here, it's the master hub, and then you have the master die, and then you have the working hub, and then the working die, and then, of course, they apply the mint mark. That's how this process works. Okay. And if you come in and you go to the website, you can read all of this in more detail explain a little bit better to you. So basically, like I said, you've got die varieties or something that happens to the die, whether it be the upper leaf, lower leaf on the Wisconsin quarter, or whether it be a double die, or whether it be a repunch mint mark, it all happens to the die. Okay. And that's very important. That's a die variety. Okay. Now, mint errors are basically when the metal was made for the planche at the alloy, uh, or it goes to the annealing oven, something like that. Or something crazy happens in this uh, coining chamber, you know, which, you know, you're talking about striking errors. So over here, you've got the die hub errors, and you can have die cracks and chips and gouges and things of that, that nature on the die, which can be pups like pickup points for a variety. It doesn't make it a variety. Now, I know you've got cuds on coins and things like that that are considered varieties, and that's fine too, but you usually it's got to be pretty dramatic. Then you got your repunch mint mark, your over mint mark, your dual mint marks, and things like that. And I, like I said, I encourage you to come in here and read all of this. Go to the website, pause the video, and try to read this. You have double dies, and you have different classes of double dies, eight different classes. You have, the, like I said, the double squeeze at one time to create the die, the working die. Now you have the single squeeze. And like I said, I've got videos on double dies so you, to help you understand that process a little bit, or at least how those occur. Over here, you have the explanation of each class of double die. 
And basically you've got class one that's rotated hub doubles. And it shows you the, the rotation on a lot of these is what causes them to be a different what direction they're actually rotated in or tilted or whatever. And then you've got the distorted hub doubles. And, you know, they, they take the dies and they re-anneal them and, and reinstall them and back and forth. And all these errors can occur when they're creating the dies. Um, you have the class three, which is design hub doubles. Uh, basically, you're looking at the 42 over 41 Mercury Dine, uh, the 1960 small date over large date, things like that is falls under that. Then you have the uh, you know, class four, it's offset hub double, the, like I said, class five pivoting hub double, class six distended, and you've got the modified hub double, then you got the tilted hub double. And these are all important reads that you need to go through and read. Okay, that's very important just to pause it and read this or go to the website and read it. I'm sorry that I'm not going as slow as I need to and explaining as much as I need to. Here's the mint marks. All the mint marks from all the mints. You've got the Philadelphia mint, the Denver mint, the West Point mint, San Francisco mint, Carson City, New Orleans, uh, Charlotte, and also um, Delonga. So you've got all these mints and accidentally put uh, New Orleans in here twice, but it's the O mint. But anyways, it's good to come in here and just, you know, look over this, read it, go to the website, pause it if you have to. Uh, basically, I went through the uh, planchet errors. Um, you've got the blanks and you got the type one to type two, and I went through all of that, and Rome stock and Rome metal and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's very important to go in and learn the mini process, error-reference.com. You can type in any of these and learn what it is. You can go to my website and learn the basics of it as well. Then here is a little kind of a confusing diagram in a way, but it shows you uh, early die stages to late die stages where a lot of the varieties can occur, uh, different uh, possibilities as far as that's concerned. Um, like I said, you got die clashes and you've got uh, misaligned, averse, and things like that. It's just kind of an example of showing you the process. So like I said, that's the minting process in a nutshell, real basic, real simple. Um, I, you know, you can write a book on this or two, uh, but go over to my website, uh, look it up, read about it, study it out, and it'll help you a whole lot. I mean, like I said, you, once you understand this process and you understand what's going on with the coins and what they go through, it becomes a little more simple and you look for less things. You don't look for those little tiny anomalies on coins. You look for the major stuff. You look for the varieties and things that are rare. You don't waste time looking for little images and shapes and things like that on coins or whatever. So anyways, thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.